Hello, and welcome to D and DDT. We're Hello. here on the Known World United Twitch stream for another Taste Boys taping, as we do every other Wednesday here on Twitch.tv slash Known World United. And hey, it's a very special edition of D and DDT because we're in a very special home stretch leading up to Extra Life for Kids. We're going to be playing. November 5th through the 7th, benefiting Gillette's Children's Specialty Healthcare here in the metro area of Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, you know, those 28 million vaccines uh, for kids age 5 to 11, they're, they're still a long ways out. Uh, they're coming, but they're not here yet. And uh, in the metro, we're reporting 20 kids being admitted for COVID-related um, illness every day. So uh, why don't you hang out with us tonight? Uh, we're going to be posting some links to donate in the chat. Uh, follow them. Uh, give a donate. Put a share on your social media. Uh, shares have been shown to raise uh, 7 to $9 on average because when we get the word out, more people know that we're doing it for the kids. We're doing it for the kids, although we can't legally say that anymore because uh, some jerk waters in Pennsylvania copyrighted for the kids. So we're doing it. To benefit for the kids. To, to, to benefit for the kids. Uh, tonight and every night. Rolls off the tongue. That's yeah. good. That's, yeah. that's good yeah. stuff. That's good. That's great. Well, you know what? That's uh, that's what we got. So uh, so watch along tonight as we tape again the Tasty Boys with the Tasty Boys uh, for two wonderful episodes, uh, 136 and 137. Uh, and without further ado... I think I'll fix the goofy streaming thing because we're all frozen. And then uh, maybe we'll have the beautiful disembodied voice of uh, Janet the Professional uh, let us know that ooh la la, we're rolling. It's also copyrighted. Frozen. J Janet, the, oh, Janet the Professional. It's very popular. Frozen. It's all, it's everything copyrighted now. Well, uh, tasty fact, uh, last uh, taping... Nate, uh, our D&D &D ringer, was not, in fact, singing Frozen. That's true. He was singing Yentl, I believe. Mm -hmm. It was. Mm -hmm. It was, yeah. 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 Which, I, they I, sound I, very similar. I did not think it about that. It was not, well. do you want to build this? Yeah, it's... Yeah, no, I, I don't want to go up against a mouse anytime soon. Yeah. Well, we're going to fight a lot of giant mice tonight. Yeah, so. Dan Fitz has already fought his battles against... Large conglomerates for names. He doesn't want to do it again. Uh, he's, doing, it he's not even going to be able to use his real name. Copyright. Uh, uh, that's that still hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, that McKill face name is still there, everybody. Oh, warrior! Eleven months resub. Oh my god! Think of all the money that we're we're making to benefit for for with the kids. But right off the top, the children. Woo! Man, just killing it already. So, uh, so yeah. Ex Extra yeah. Life 2021. The children are our beneficiaries. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> this is really good. I know. This really is, good. This is what people tune in for. People, it is. Tune in. It is for this right here. Hey, should we tape an episode? Yeah, I guess. Pow! Is that a awesome. Batman observation classic warrior? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what a silly goose. He like sure's this. got our best interests at heart. Pow! So, again, tonight we're trying to raise 3% of our goal. We're uh, we're already almost at 1700 of our $10,000 goal for this year. So let's try raising 300 bucks. That's just donations of 100 bucks. Six donations of 50. 15! 20 what? or 30 it's, 10. it's the number of pins in a perfect game of bowling yeah there. so be like ryan cruz avid bowler and do better give share like subscribe uh follow and, ring that uh, bell yeah ring that bell yeah punch that bell pow 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 it's also ah, a bowling one we're going we're going we're going big and and we're going home party home we're going going we're going big and home. All right. Here we go. I did it. How Recording big? in progress.
Welcome. Got it. Shitheads <laughs> to another fantastic <laughs> ass butts. All right, let's take that from the top. Recording stopped. Oh. Boo. Boo. B-B-E-G. How could we? <laughs> do you want me to not? Do you want me to not cut it when uh, when when people interrupt? Donate to our extra live stream. Donate ten dollars right now to not cut the episode. We'll get all the bloopers. All right, that sounds good. Ten dollars in, done, boom. Recording in progress. Welcome to another episode of D and DDT. I am the Beard. We're here live at Known World United's Twitch channel, as we are every other Wednesday, taping big old episodes of D and DDT with the one and only a Tasty Boys. Tasty, Tasty boys. boys. Hey, if you haven't listened to us before, maybe let us <coughs> know that. D and DDT with the Tasty Boys is an ongoing, fast, casual, interdimensional dining culinary experience. We've got five beautiful boys with us tonight, as well as me. Hey, I'm the Beard. I'll be your DM. I'd like the boys to introduce themselves, talk a little bit about what happened during our last episode, episode 135. And we're going to go on a magical, mystical journey here in episode 136, filled with all sorts of emotional turmoil and maybe Lom having a couple more drinks, but not. Being drunk, just fun. So, for the perennial buzzed ringer, because he's always he's always on it. He's got his That's... got his finger on the pulse of the world, and the world is buzzing. I don't know if that's true, but I do start. That's correct. So I am Nate, your D and D ringer, playing Bard Extraordinaire Horatio Hetfeld. Last time on D and DDT, I sang some songs. It's pretty great. Had some dreams, and we'll see what else happens. We're going to find some more pieces of Durende right after I finish this tweet. I wish you uh, wore a babushka. I'll see what I can do. You should talk to Rock about uh, about getting a getting a costume or disguise for every song you sing. Okay. That would you should be also funny. you should also figure out which spell you can adapt so that you can sing "Babushka" by Kate Bush, which would be I just want to hear it. So if you can. That out. That um, I can there's do. a lot of spells. Uh, I'm Warrior. I play Klingtos Begore, spelled like it sounds. Minotaur Monk, Red Meat Babyface, Dune to Digger Doom Tree, and Horatio Hetfield, and a bunch of other stuff. Last time on D and DDT, I participated in a poignant village ritual. I am resident international Iron Man deathmatch superstar cowboy extraordinaire playing Esquire. Esquire. No playing. honey mustard this time. No, you did lie to us, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Honestly, I was a little disappointed because it was spicy, and it, it made me sad. I was like, "Hey, the one thing I want this not to be is spicy," and it was anyway. So, but was it also on that, sweet? No, no, no. I it mean, just straight kicking for, your pants for people that like spice, they might like it, but I it made me sad. I was like, Well, this is disappointing. But on the note of disappointment, I am Dig a Doom Tree, Tabaxi Warlock of the Woods. Um, just nice, easy talker, melee fighter. Um, Sneak attacker, what you need, I can do. Uh, duck defender, mainly. I was really hoping that was going to rhyme like avid backpacker. No. no. Save the quacker, I don't know. Hey, that's you good. Know? You can have inspiration <sighs> for that one, buddy. I already have it. Damn me for being good. Yeah, it's a real disappointment when you have to play him. How dare I? Boone's trying again. This is the worst. <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Wait, we're doing things? Oh, no. You should uh. start. You should start a line of CSA boxes called Boone's Bar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's using that. Nope. Nobody relevant. 
No. <laughs> no. Not once you're over 18. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh no. Anyway, hello everyone. I am referee Dan Fitzgerald playing the lovely and confusing Lom Twilight Forge. Oh, Last I forgot time. to change. I forgot to change the overlay again, Dan. I I figure oh. that much. I'm fine. Shoot. We'll we'll get right. there. It's been like a hundred plus episodes. We are okay. I figured it wasn't going to. Anyway, last time on the the, the the from what I remember, because I have lost my notes in an unfortunate instant at work last week, is due to, uh, due to what? An electrical fire that was not my fault because I was in an old busted fault. building. <laughs> if, no, if, I'd be in jail right Lom now for arson. Been, if Lom would have been around for for Digger saying, that's how you can start a control fire. <laughs> we would have been okay. I think if Tasty Voice has taught us anything, it's that you don't go to jail for committing arson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lom doesn't. Dan most certainly would. Oh, wait. Actually, and, you did go to jail after you committed arson. Never mind. Oh, that was before. Yeah. Yep. It was pre Anyway. <laughs> anyway uh, last time, from what I remember, I got drunk at a table because I saw my dad and avoided him and then joined in the festivities later on. Sending down my weighted dice set down the river that I've had since the beginning of the game that I've gotten from friends. All right, and I'm Joel playing Big Bloody Rock Leaf Bottom, the halfling barbarian turned monk. Halfling. He's a halfling. Hey, you just keep half believing that, brother. Yeah, and uh, last time he did not roll particularly well when it counted, and that could make this episode or next episode more interesting. Excellent. Well, yes, we find ourselves back in Lavosia, um, enjoying a uh, fantastic. Who's all this in the chat? Uh, fan, granted. Uh, sorry. Um, that's private chat, folks. That's uh, something you can enjoy both in a visual medium and a non-visual medium at the same amount. Because, hey, who likes our jokes? Us and no one else, because we don't share them. Um, so we're back in Lavosia. We've been enjoying this uh, lovely little meeting. Uh, we've, had some, um, we've had some visions as the uh, leaves in Lavosia have burnt and our remembrances have floated down the river. Last episode, I got a little fucked because the the players really put their all into some of their connections to their loved ones. It was quite touching. It was quite uh, quite happy. So if you don't have inspiration, why doesn't everybody start this episode with inspiration? I I, I, I had to work for mine. You, you had I already had what? one coming in. Okay. I I had to work for it, but it's okay. Yeah, hey, that's. That's the idea. You have to do work in order to inspire others. Namely, this guy. And namely, I've been inspired. So I was just, you know, generosity. No, no generosity goes unpunished here. DMT with <laughs> one and only Tasty Voice. Tasty Voice will punish that's, generosity. That's pretty, pretty spot on. Oh, uh, I just wanted to let you know I already have it, so that does nothing for me. <laughs> Screw, <laughs> screw the rest of the party. I don't care if they get it. You know what? I didn't have it, and I'm happy to have it. Yay. Thank you for your generous gift. Oh. Yeah, I'm most appreciative. Well, shucks, gang. I'm glad everybody enjoys it that already had it, and I'm glad people who didn't have it will hopefully enjoy it sometime during this episode. So, um, we're back in Lavosia. We've had a kind of uh, a festival evening. It's uh, wrapping up and drawing to a close. It's not not a somber uh, festival per se. It is a celebration of of uh, the ancestors. But um, you know the the night winds down and you find yourself um, heading to uh, bed. You can um, 
kind of make your sleeps uh, wherever you'd like, but the, the kind of uh, barn has been opened up um, for anybody that has traveled into the village in order to um, accommodate you know, as many folks as we can. Um, there's uh, there's spaces in the uh, in the loft or uh, kind of throughout um, for all of you to take sleep. So if you'd like to take a long rest, you're more than welcome to. I'd like to do that. That sounds great. Right. Indeed. Successful. A nice long rest sounds good right about now. Collected and I can play. All right, so as we're long rested up, um, like to uh, think a little bit about what's next. The heart awaits you. Um, you also have other compatriots here in town, uh, including but not limited to uh, the good brother, as well as the good father, or not so good father, depending on who you talk to. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd like to hear a little bit maybe about where everybody's head is at um, in terms of the experiences thus far. Um, and uh, um, more in the chat uh, and uh, and kind of how you're feeling about um, or what what uh, what your character is thinking about um, what's like to hear and what anybody. Anybody's character thinking about these things, eager to move on? Oh, yeah. Horatio is definitely uh, thinking about his old pals in bad company, wondering what befell them when he left, when he was called away, uh, and wanting to get back there. Mm -hmm. So we'll see where this goes. What do you think, uh, What it, does he have uh, any inkling about where he feels he should be going, what he should be doing to accomplish that? Well, I mean, the first thing he needs to do is uh, take care of this whole forest Durende question, figure out what's going on there, how everybody here is linked to his other friends. There seems to be some sort of link there. No doubt. How about uh, how about everybody else? Some some musings and or things that you'd like to uh, explore or discuss amongst the uh, around the rest of the board. Um, I think after participating in the uh, the, the town ritual, Cletus um, is sort of his head is sort of. Uh, in a place of trying to connect things. And he thinks about how, where they are now is connected to what happened to Evelina and thinks about like the, they got here through a tree and there's been a lot of tree connections here um, and a lot of connections through nature. Um, and so I think he spent some time uh, walking around the village and Taking a look at the, uh, you said there were banners with sort of phosphorescent symbology on them. Mm -hmm. um, I think that reminds him of what he saw uh, at the Starless uh, mm -hmm. on the ceiling. And so he wants to kind of use his um, understanding of nature and also his uh, cartography skills because uh, it felt like what was on the ceiling was kind of like a map to um, see if there's, you know, sort of a, a similar pattern in this uh, phosphorescent um, decoration that might clue him in on where they should go or where something else might be. Yes, absolutely. Uh, why don't you roll me um, either investigation or history or arcana, depending on kind of how you feel Kletos would go about that. Um, I'll let you take your pick. Okay. Um, well, gosh, it's so hard to pick between three things that are plus zero. Um, I think he'll go. Um, I think he'll go. I think he's. I think he'll go. Uh, investigation. That's kind of clues based. It's piecing together 
potentially disparate pieces of information into a coherent whole. So I rolled a 16. So you recognize um, a number of the uh, symbols that represent the the sigils of the different clans here in Lavosia um, from the uh, ceiling tapestry in the uh, um, the uh, Starlight Citadel or the Starless Citadel, rather. Um, you don't kind of necessarily recognize uh, a, a same pattern, um, but you do recognize that they are in relationship to one another in kind of similar fashion. Okay. Um, do I have any insight into what more about that relationship, what that relationship signifies or entails, or just bare bones that they're related somehow? You may not have that information, but you do know that there's someone else in the party that has <clears throat> a number of kind of uh, sigil pieces um, on his person. And for once, true. it's not him who's forgotten a note. Um, so yeah. A note. <laughs> Great, I'll go talk to Horatio. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you, I, if you oh, go ahead. I think he'd also be. I think he'd also be correlating this with the symbology he saw in the tongue mm -hmm. in that circle, as well as the one at. Um, where Digger went to jail. Yes. Um, so yeah, if you if you end up kind of uh, tag teaming this with Horatio, you can find that the etching that he's made from the tongue and from the Starless Citadel do indeed have the same kind of uh, spatial arrangements of these pieces um, that uh, start to kind of look like um, kind of large uh, kind of adjoined pieces. If you kind of take them um, together, they're always in some uh, relationship to one another or uh, kind of across the circle. Um, so there's always kind of certain pairs, trios, or kind of groupings or individuals that have the same kind of spatial relationship to one another. And you see that symbology um, playing out um, in the, what you remember of the starless citadel ceiling of the uh, the kind of sigil round there um, in the grounds where, where Digger was uh, kept, as well as what um, started prior to the, uh, the kind of erasure of some of the runes um, the uh, documentation that Horatio made um, while you were in the cave of the whispers. When you say large adjoined pieces, you mean like, I don't know, shards? Well, they don't look like shards per se. They look like sigils, but large you could, adjoined pieces. why don't you make me an insight check? I will make an insight check. You make it an advantage because you're being saucy. So I think... <clears throat> Uh, that's good, because one of them was a two and the other one was a 19, so that's 21. Um, yes, um, given your keen, saucy, adventuring skills, um, you're slowly piecing things together. Um, you feel like there could be a relationship between these and this kind of legend of the shards that, uh, that kind of fell and um, kind of Created a lot of the, um, a lot of the mythology behind both kind of this world and some of the other more fantastical pieces of the uh, the uh, prime material and and, um, and plane of elemental uh, airs that you have uh, you've found yourself in in previous points in your journeys. So when Rock and Lom were leading us into town, that kind of stopped around that barn area, didn't it? Um, yeah, it brought you to uh, it brought you to the barn. Are there any sorts of similar symbols around the barn specifically? Or just is that more around the town with the banners and things? 
Um, you just made note of them in the uh, in the town on those banners in terms of kind of phosphorescence. Um, you could certainly, you know, uh, look around the barn or, you know, kind of investigate if you'd like to. And if I do, it's cocked and or that's he wants to make me a 20. History check about last night. Lom, well, if you're going to make a history check, you can make so at disadvantage because you were imbibing open. I, I yawned and did not hear. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Um, exactly. Uh, I said Lom was imbibing last night, so if he wanted to make a history check to remember something he might have seen the night before, he could do so at disadvantage. The rest of the people um, okay. who were I'll do that. bright-eyed and bushy-tailed can make a roll uh, normally. 16. Are you in history or said... investigation? Um, yes. Nate, if it's something that you're looking for now, investigation, mm -hmm. um, if your inclination is to kind of like think back, like, you know, Horatio is like, I want to look around, you can do that. Anybody else who wants to look around can make investigation. If you want to kind of like think back, if you're kind of like saying this out loud, like, okay, hey, we're on to something. Can anybody remember seeing these anywhere besides, you know, the, the sigils that are on the banners? Um, you can make it. Oh, for for me, it's seventeen. Uh, no, uh, sixteen. Excuse me. I rolled a nineteen and an eighteen, so minus two is sixteen. Gotcha. Wait, what do you have for a minus two stat? Because uh, for investigation, oh, no uh, history. Hint for history. Excuse oh. me. Hint. Still minus two for me. <laughs> Check. Um. Okay. So, uh, who who rolled what? Natural 20 for a 25 investigation. I rolled a five for history. Rod, I... you were very concerned with Mother and gathering all of her favorite foods, which are all of the foods. So you were quite uh, you were quite busy and you were like, mm, you know, didn't see anything. Did see pork chops. Mama loves pork chops. Um, uh, I already investigated, so... I rolled a 16 on history. Okay. Uh, Digger, are you investigating as part of this or are you doing other things? No, I'd assume I'm like playing with the ducks and doing my own thing. Not really <clears throat> doing too much right now. All right. Sounds good. Um, so, yes, a uh, uh, history check. Um, you notice. Um, Kletos, that a number of these sigils were inscribed on the boxes, which is not completely surprising, seeing as how they are the kind of family uh, kind of runes for the different uh, kind of ruling families of, of the village, the kind of council. Uh, um, and so these were part of that ritual connecting um, the kind of the current inhabitants kind of through the ages to their ancestors. Um, Horatio, what did you, you rolled a nat 20? Yep, so that's 25 investigation. For investigation. Um, you don't, uh, you don't recognize kind of anything that's standing out here that's kind of a sigil like that. Um, but you do note that there is um, hanging on a tack. Uh, there is a, um, a kind of small um, uh, stone that has a, a sigil um, marked in it um, where uh, some people are sleeping. Is that uh, one of the family sigils or is it different from those? Um, it's not one of the family sigils that you recognize, but it is one from your um, from your notes. Is that where we were sleeping, or there's other people there? Uh, there's other people sleeping there. All right, so I'll kind of point that out to Cletus. All right. Um, I think that means. That's a good question. Damn it, Joel. Uh, um, I, I saw up? that. Quick follow up on the, the sigils. 
yeah. um, kind of on the history tip of where he's seen them before. Did he, did Plato see any of this type of symbology in the sort of disturbingly realistic dreams he's had? Aha. Uh -huh. That's a great question. Why don't you make Isn't a history it? check to see what you can remember? Okay. I'm running out of good luck on history checks. <laughs> that is, I'm going to use my inspiration for that. I want to be better than the six. Yeah. <coughs> that was worse. <laughs> six. Um, it's hazy. You feel like, you feel like there's a dream in particular that you had that you um, also had uh, something uh, hanging around your neck um, with a sigil on it. Um, but you can't remember which dream. It's just kind of like a hazy, like you see that once he points it out to you and you kind of flash back to one of your dreams, kind of have like a very strong feeling of deja vu. Like it might be the same symbol, kind of deja vu, or just a similar stone or you know, like a similar physical product. a similar a similar physical thing like maybe that's something that that you done or that like in your dream um that you were wearing uh, a kind of necklace with a with a stone and sigil i'll, I'll tell horatio like I, remember when we were having those weird dreams i feel like i feel like i was wearing something like this in one of them all right i'm gonna have to make a history check to see if that's something i recognize Uh, let's see, that is 3020. Is um, that something I remember Destrous wearing? You uh you have vague recollections of Destrous having various kind of necklaces and trinkets. Um he wore like arm bands. Um and so this could have been something that uh that he might have worn. Or something similar. Yeah, Cletus, it could be something that uh, Destrous, the Minotaur we talked about, has worn, but it's not not clicking. Yeah, it's not quite clicking for me either. Maybe I just need to have more nightmares. Yeah, hopefully we'll get it figured out and those can stop. Yeah, that would be cool. Digger, what are you up to while this is going on? I'm not doing a whole lot. I uh, I guess I would just kind of be around while they're researching. I don't really have an agenda right now. Uh, we're not in the woods. I mean, I've spent enough time there in the last three years. Um, you know, maybe doing a little bit of soul searching, thinking about where I've been, where I'm at. Uh, what's next for me? Uh, is there? Uh, I don't have any money anyway. Never mind. Um, what about your brother? Which one? <laughs> Benjamin T. Stacks, the cat with all the <laughs> scratch. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, he's still back in the normal, um, uh, the normal world while we are in this not normal world. Gotcha. He was he was the the trust fund that I I hedged all my money from to to have my startup costs for my first business before Tasty Boys in a dimensional. And what was that business? Oh, and that was allowed. my that was my drug rate. Oh. Yeah, it takes a, it's actually a lot of money to start a drug rate, but good thing I got out of that. Not I don't know if you ever really get out, even though you stop doing it. You know, I feel like that might come back to haunt me one day, but I haven't dealt with that since like episode 30, so it's fine. When we get back, there might be a gang of guys waiting for you with baseball bats. Maybe, who knows? I've got tough kneecaps. We'll see. Says says the guy who is perennially hated by half the towns that the Tasty Boys have been in. Oh, it's when we not... get back to the prime material plane, it's probably going to be trouble for you. <laughs> Not me. 
Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, Lom, how about you? You, what are you up to? What, what, what's Rock up to? What are you, what are you guys, what are you guys thinking about? Uh, Rock is in a mind set of manners being very important. Uh, so he's kind of going around and thanking people for feeding him the other night and putting him up. And then to show his appreciation, he's going to do like, uh, patrol the outskirts of the town because a lot of stuff has fallen on this town every time we visit. So to show his appreciation, he's going to just kind of patrol and keep an eye out outside of the town. Okay. All right. Um, are you looking for anything in particular or just generally kind of keeping an eye out for creepy stuff since there was creepy stuff last time? The second one. Okay, excellent. Because, you know, maybe it's wolves. Maybe it's walking tree people that you can't hurt. I mean, we eventually killed it. Maybe it's justice ducks. You you don't know where the weird is coming from in this town. I mean, you're not you're not wrong. Um, so yeah, why don't you make me a perception check and we'll see see how we're doing there. Uh, twenty one. Yeah, I mean, all in all, the the day seems to be quiet. Um, you hear kind of a regular amount of of animals in the wood. You know, you remember from your time. Around here, there's certainly more animals kind of in the wood around Lafosia, but not necessarily, um, you know, uh, in the, as in the prime material plane as you'd expect. It's still quiet and a little bit eerie. Um, Rock doesn't love it, but Rock um, also uh, continues to kind of hear and feel that uh, that heartbeat um, uh, that he heard previously. Okay. Um, Lam, how about you? Lom is, he's kind of emotionally exhausted at, at this point because he's been separated from everyone and then tossed through magical portals or and teleported by spells and whatnot. And he was thinking like, I'm home for a little while. And, you know, and then auntie went and shoved me through magic. And now I'm here. I haven't had a real you know, chance to sit. And then he runs into his dad. He's just, he's, he's, not, he's, he's not in the best of places at the moment, mentally, but he's just really wanting to gather everyone up when they're done with their stuff. Go talk to my dad if we need to, to figure out and then what we need to do for the heart, do what we need to do, and then be, be either A, get as far away from this place as possible, or, or at least just get as far away from him as possible. Because the murderous intent is, is right, right there. <laughs> and Lama just, he's going to go grab, grab a morning drink, drink, hair of the dog style, and just, just just kind of relax and try to, you know, keep his mind numb a little bit. All right. So. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. <laughs> um, so. Uh, well, you are doing that. Um, our kind of two current private dicks, or private Dick and Harry. Um, what uh, what's next um, for you guys in your in your investigation or uh, kind of noodling of all of this? Any other things that you feel like you want to try to accomplish before reuniting with the boys? No, I think we should probably check and see if Lom and Rock are still being pulled in that specific direction. They're being pulled anywhere else. Maybe we'll have to ask around town. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, feel like we're feel like we're making progress, but I feel like we're probably not going to figure all this out until we find the heart. So, yeah, we should probably group back up. Um, all right. Well, you guys are free to, uh, you know, unsplit the party anytime. <laughs> um, so if you want to go and, you know, find find everybody, they're not hard to find. Uh, you see Rock patrolling the 
outskirts of the uh, the village, Lom, uh, drinking and uh, Digger doing whatever the duck he's doing. And uh, um. Uh, um, so yeah, you guys can all come back together. Um, there's a, a kind of a large table that's set out in the uh, the middle of the town and uh, various uh, members of the town are, are kind of setting a large uh, communal um, breakfast to uh, to kind of celebrate the uh, the closing um, and give thanks for the bounty of the uh, the harvest um, as their ancestors um, have for generations here in the forest. Um, they welcome you to uh, to join them um, and to uh, to kind of thank uh, the spirits of the ancestors that watch over us uh, once more before we're going uh, our separate ways. Um, I thank everyone for for coming back to this place where we have come together, um, and that as we make our way back out um, to you know our various reaches of the forest um, that we remember that this is where we come from and this is where we return to. Nice little morning benediction. Mm -hmm. Hey guys. Rock, be sure to wash up before food. All right, yeah, you can oh, go down. Just grabbing some breakfast, but mostly just a big mug of ale and just sitting down with like a small like bacon and eggs and then just like a half a liter of just ale. Check. All right, I'm gonna put some more food in front of the lawn. Probably gonna, gonna wanna eat a lot more. <clears throat> no. Sure. This mug is the only thing keeping me from sticking a blade inside my father. So yes. But I just take a swig. You're sure you really just don't want to give him a hug? The man walked out on me 26 years ago and then just magically just decides I'm part of this whole grand adventure without trying to explain anything and just expect me to hop and go. Oh yes. When he leaves me and my mother on the worst side of town with no money. It's really yeah, hard sure. to find a pack of smokes in the promontory of wine. The rest of your tail will be a necktie. I'm just saying. The like, rest I'm of your tail will make a fantastic necktie. I swear on all the gods. Okay, both of you. You're not like yourself when you're hungry. You better eat some. Two things. Some of this branded breakfast product <laughs> sitting on the table here. And I'll, I'm going to go sit by the mom's dad. Two things, Lon. One, I will totally eat that if you're not going to. I push that plate out given, given to him. him. And two, speaking as someone who never had a father, if my father showed up, I mean... Whatever baggage would be there, I would set aside and like embrace the fact that I have family. This is an opportunity that like I'll probably never get. And you know, I think it's it's kind of foolish to pass it up. You you have a chance to uh, mend things that get mended. I have nothing to mend. If you came first and the first thing he tried to do was mend things. I would be like, sure, you're fine. That's 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 another thing. That's the start of the conversation. But no, he came in with demands. Like he didn't just walk out on me when I was a small child. I barely have any remembrance of him. My mother has a chalk drawing of him, a painted thing on the wall, and a lot of knives sticking out of it because every morning she just throws knives at that painting. That just seems unhealthy. Yeah, no, we're not the healthiest bunch of folks. Twilight Forges over there are not the most mentally stable individuals. I will well, admit that. If you think about it, like if you just don't sell it and you just pretend like nothing happened, then maybe you kind of get away with it. I mean, 
I don't agree with the tactics, but it might work. He's like, oh, nothing happened. It's totally fine. Let me just carry on. You know, no, that, that, that's essentially what I'm doing. I'm ignoring him and not selling anything he ever says to me. Oh, you're both good. not selling. Well, brother, you're supposed to work together, haven't you, man? I mean, alternatively, you could ask him why he left. True. I did try, try to. He said, I had a grander duty and this, that, and the other thing in front of everybody and stuff like that. And all he's going to do is grandiose and big talk. I, I faced enough guys like that in my life. Yeah, but there's like big 17 dollars. All big promises. All fucking BS. Did, Did you let him tell you about his duty? He did <laughs> tell us about his duty. And mature, <laughs> mature rock. <laughs> yes, he told us about that all when I asked him about it, remember? And then he did this whole wild ringmaster salesman gimmick and, and you know. Honestly, kind of impressive that he's like the leader of like this cult compound while being called off to do it. Kind of cool. I mean, still not a great father, but no. No. As soon as we get this done and the sooner we're out of here, the farther I am away from him, the happier I will be. And I continue to eat what little food I have and just drink. I'm just saying, guys, maybe he should try the Kool Aid. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe if conversation is too much, you could just ask him to play catch. Yeah, ask him to have a catch. Hey, Rock, do you want to come sit next to me and your dad? I think that's a no. Oh, you mean Lom's dad? Yeah. I mean, yeah, also the Lom's dad. Rock will relocate over to uh, Cletus and Lom's dad. All right. So you sit down and uh, um, their father uh, welcomes you back and... Uh, and uh, wishes you well on on this, uh, this fine morning, and and says, I I very much appreciate the love that you've shown for all of those who are dear to you in your lives. Rock your mother, a woman worthy of tribute. I saw you found all of her favorite foods. This is a quest unto itself. In fairness. She didn't have many foods she didn't like. She was a hearty woman. And Kletos, I, I found the connections that you spoke of to be profound. Well, you keep them in your heart and the words are between you and them. The intention and the focus. You saw things when you burnt the leaf. Yes? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Only those whose connection is pure and stable and strong show us and guide us. The ancestors speak to us. Hmm. Well, well, I appreciate that. I don't know. Well, I've been trying try to, I've been trying to listen to this place. And understand it. I think I'm supposed to. I think I'm supposed to learn a lot here. Here a lot. Maybe solve a few things. So it helps to know I'm going in the right direction. We're all out here searching for something. Some of us, family. Others, family of a different sort. Yeah, and a family is the best kind of family, I think. But, but hey, you know, speaking of hearty, uh, you, know, you know, your sons here, they've been feeling a pretty mighty pull toward this heart we're looking for. Did they talk to you about that at all? They have communicated that to us, what sort of undoubtedly profound conversations they've both had with you is. Your sons. I've been asked to not speak to 
Kron and Mom. And so I am doing my best to respect their wishes. Really? Yeah. Kron, Rock, Rock. You should, yeah. you should yeah. talk to your dad. Who's right, right here. here. This, this, this is the, the person. person. He like, like kind of holds it about his shoulders. shoulders. Like, dad, right here. Hello. Sure, dad. I, I, I don't, don't have a dad. dad. You, you, you do, do when you, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I could, could do worse. That's a start. I mean, I, mean, I don't, don't think you would be a bad, bad dad, dad to have. It's, it's just, just, I didn't, I didn't have, have to have, have a mom. mom. I was not a father to you in the way that you were a father. Rock, sorry. Of course, I'm not to But I, I could hear any of that. Oh, in the reality <laughs> or in uh, Boo Boo? Yeah, yeah, in reality. You were a robot. Excellent. Um, oh, we have Stretch from Big Logan. He also says, you know what happens? Always helps family reconciliation. A good old-fashioned mug of sand hick. Oh, boy. Uh, sand hegs hide. do not know what this is, but I make a stretch. And then I repeat from robot voice and say to Rock, I was not the father to you that I should have been. But I would like to be a father to you now, if you'll have me. Like, like, like you're, you're adopting, adopting me? me? Yes, we're adopting each other. We are both without. Though it is something that we, that I would desperately love. And if you would like to have catch or, you know, Break things, learn ways of our people, uh, throwing rocks, mm, very good at it, could share. Uh, we could uh, form a bond. Okay. Trust, trust, trust is earned. I will call you rock. You, you may call me drum. And perhaps someday I will call you crumb. And you will call me papa. I don't get you calling me Crom, but otherwise, sure, that sounds nice. He kind of like wipes a little tear away from his uh, thing and he says, yes, rock, steady, sturdy, like your mother. Yes. Also, you like all of her same foods, which is all of them. I do like all foods. I find the thing that makes food better is the amount. I think that this is true. And he just kind of like, you can see him kind of like trying to decide what to do next. And then he just kind of like puts his hand like on top of your hand, just kind of like does the like awkward pat a couple times. And then says, yes. We will go play catch with three. This is how, this is how our family plays catch. Uh, throwing rocks to each other, dangerous. Throwing rocks at other things, fun. Yes. Also, I would love to say that like a round of bacon would probably be a good way to celebrate our new adoption. I think that that's what we're doing. Bacon makes everything better. Bacon makes everything better. Yes. Um, yes, very, very good. Um, I will uh, let let me procure. Uh, please, please. Does anyone have platter of bacon? We we are adopting. Oh, while that is going on, I'm just going to look Horatio dead in the eye. I'm just like, look, I know you don't agree with a lot of things that, that I'm doing right now, but I'm... Do not trust myself, which is why I'm making decisions I'm making. And I am going to go into my boot and pull out my knife 
and hand it and put it on the table in front of him and be like, if I step out of line, I need you to stop me. Or drop me. One of the two. I will do my best. Thank you. Take that. Are you put it in mind? Giving your dagger to Horatio? Mm hmm. Okay. All right. Yep, yeah, I'm just kind of putting it on the table in front of him. As in, like, I'll send him the whole card thing that I have written for it. It's not anything super cool, but it's just. Yeah. From the end of the table, Rock yells, Whoa! I just got a dad, and he's getting me bacon! Awesome! You want to go share some of that bacon? You go ahead. I'll go over in a minute. All right, I'm gonna head down that way. All right. Um, Guidos, uh, you're sitting there enjoying this scene. Is there anything that I you'd like to do? I this scene. Besides, now, this ratio arrives, and we we'll like this. This is a little cold. Do you know he bacon? Sorry, what was that? I said this. Um, this is a little cold. Do you know heat bacon? I know you got like magical heating stuff, and I was just wondering. You know, I wish. Actually, let's see. Unfortunately, not. Well, Although, I mean, that's okay. Is, is it on a pan? I was gonna say, do you know heat metal? I do. Is it on a pan? If it's on a pan. Oh my god, you're gonna set the whole thing. You know, literally, <laughs> a lot of people have metal on them. Yes. <laughs> No prestidigitation. Um, That's not going to heat things, though. <laughs> now, if you drop the bacon on the ground, I got you. Oh, I, so I can just rub two sticks together very fast. I you, you should were, do that. I thought you were doing duck things. Are you here for breakfast now? Well, I've been around for breakfast. Oh, okay, well, I didn't know. You're like, I'm, Digger's off doing his own thing. <clears throat> He's trying to create a, a honey mustard brand that goes slightly awry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll just I'll, I'll work on like what three years I learned this trick. See, yeah. So yeah, you can you start a start a little uh, start a little fire there on the table. Uh, it's control, this is guys. <laughs> control. Do you see this? This is great. I like this. This is what our teamwork looks like. It makes Long's dad's dream work. It warms my heart in addition to this bladder of bacon. <laughs> uh, well, hey, do you... Broken cayenne pepper jars. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean the cayenne pepper <laughs> that? <laughs> that would never knock it old. So you guys been uh, as feeling the poll today? Well, right, well, 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 uh, you and I have two different effects going on. This is just a modification of what my aunt did to me, except more, much more kind. That sounds like something you should report to the police. What are police? I don't talk to cops. Is, do we have a doll that Lam can point to to show us where his aunt did the thing? Um, with a staff and tapping it on the ground and then hitting me in the head with it. So, um, M magic. Uh, the uh, the elder McHillface um, pulls out a uh, a small satchel and says, "Lum, if I might, I have something for you that may address the issue that Rock is talking about." You don't have to right. take it, but perhaps I that you would recognize. And you see him pull out uh, a small uh, figure. I'd like you to make me a history check. History check from me? Yes, sir. 
Uh, that's a 17. Um, you recognize this as one of your childhood toys. Um, and he says, you have not always been with me, but what you have given to me always has been. And I am sorry for everything. When I left, it was not because I did not love you or your mother. And not being able to come back, though I did try, I spoke with your uncles, as it were, and your mother on many occasions, but there were times where I was unable to return and only by your uncles venturing forth in their ship was I able to come back to the prime material plane. By that point, my relationship with your mother was unable to be fixed. And I, for that, I am very sorry. You were a man by that point, and she was taking care of you, and you were taking care of her. And so I made my way the best way that I know how. But I keep this with me, not only to remind me of the love that I have for you, but for my shortcomings. And when I think that I am getting closer to where I need to be in this quest to make things whole, I think of this because this is a missing piece of me and it is a missing piece of the person who gave it to me. I think he means you gave it to him. <laughs> Sorry. That is not, the heat is not laughing. DM right. is laughing. Well, oh. I, am, I am very much aware of that. Thank you. I, I recognize it. I always, I guess I didn't remember what happened to it, because it used to be a full set. Masto Mas had it, so I, I don't know why she kept them. Just the little dusty figurines at this point. I understand you had a job to do, but the side of town that we were kind of left on, went from, knowing what my mother said, going from being so-so down right to the dirt. So yeah, it's, you know, more conversations from maybe, we'll see how this goes, try to figure it out and stuff like that. Because I had harbor a lot of anger, my mother more so, granted, if we ever come to the point where maybe you and my mother meet again, we'll meet and we'll bring her in a cage because she really wants to stab you. I know yes, so. And she has said, much like you have said, that she does not want to see me ever again. And I will respect that. If she were to ask, I would, I would show up on, on her door. But I don't believe that there is time for that. I do believe that there is time for us. And if... I can be adopted by Rock. I hope that I can earn your trust and I can be adopted by you as well. And hopefully I can repay many years of lost time because we are dwarves, yes? Hopefully we will all live to see many hundreds of years. And while I've missed this first part of your first century, I would hope that maybe, give or take a century or so, you could find it in your heart to have some kind of relationship with your ancestors, because I owe that to you. You owe me nothing. I understand this. But... For you to know what to put in the box, yes, in a situation like this, 
for you to truly know those people that have come before. This is important to me, and I hope that it will be important to you. I understand. And I like kind of push the tray of bacon over to him. <laughs> yeah. I'll be like, I'm just going to pick up a piece of bacon. The more yeah. we eat, the more we can drink. Yeah. I mean, you can still drink, it's still fine. And also because it, it matters to you a, a, a little bit. Um, hey, new the dragon, Yeah. The dragonfly is destroyed, by the way. And I just chomp on some bacon, dropping that news that the dragonfly is absolutely nearly destroyed. And your uncles, the crew, do we know? Uh, unheard from, nothing from Wolquin, nothing from Hearth, Hearthfire. Um, yeah, no, it was a, a literal skeleton crew that was manning it. Not the weirdest thing I've seen on that ship, but literal skeletons. It was careening out of the sky, being chased by another airship, if I remember correctly, and then just crashed on the ground in the plane of elemental air. It didn't go off the edge like the other one did, but it was kaput and no other guys anywhere to be seen. None of my friends, the captain, the first mate, the other one, the armorer. Yeah, no. So uh, it's my guess the ship is just completely out of commission or the skeleton got it back to working. I don't know. But the ship is gone. So, yeah. Well, then hopefully when this is all said and done, we can find our way back and restore her and find your uncles. Because there are very few people that would have gone searching for me when I disappeared. But when your mother told them what had happened to me, they were not afraid to take the dragonfly to find me and bring me back. Oh, yeah. yeah one's, one's completely, completely crazy, crazy, powerful, powerful and can rip holes, holes in dimension, dimension and the other one's just crazy. This is, you know, why they are friends with me. That, that explains a lot, actually. Yes. Everyone just kind of just stares off and it's just, it's just it's kind of like, like it, it seems, seems like a thousand yard sail that's kind of happy but also kind of frightening because it's memories. I kind of like the idea that like when you start doing that, then Drom starts doing it, and then Rock kind of like looks at the two of you and is just like, just you know, everybody's everybody's staring. It's a good old fashioned stare off into the distance. Oh, that that ship was the first place I sat with my anger. Excuse me. Yeah, so yeah that's when you started with my anger. Oh, yeah. with your anger? Yeah. yeah. So he's I was getting really mad. And so it, I stopped fighting and I sat down. This is astounding. I am he not quite training sure with Cletus. Perhaps I will have to talk to this Cletus as well. Well, it's me. Hi. Oh, hello. This is good. <laughs> Cletus, pleasure. I think we've talked before, yes? I remember. Yeah, that. Like, like two minutes ago. I may drink. Sometimes I forget names. Too many bumps yeah. on head. This is what happens when you run into battle too often. Hundreds of years, bang, 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 bang. Just like Ricky Martin. Yes. Cajun rage. This is fascinating. Very fascinating. Joel, if you have used inspiration, you can gain the inspiration again. It's very nice. I have not, but I appreciate the gesture. Well, you know, I am inspired. I got, I choked. <laughs> <laughs> I choked. Um, I, uh, I am William Hung of Barbarians. Um, okay. Uh, so, yeah, so you guys are able to, uh, to hang out with uh, break fast after um, after the festival, and you see that uh, each of the families are kind of very very carefully um, taking down their banners and folding them. And you see all of them have um, these these kind of carved like very carved ornate chests. It's one of the first times that you've seen any sort of kind of precious metals or or you know kind of really kind of high handicraft. Most of the 
um, the kind of village of Lavosia is is very um, is very kind of rough hewn. You know, like there's an obvious craft to um, the assembly of all of the uh, of all of the the buildings and the residences, uh, but it's very it's very practical. Um, these are you know kind of very well cared for. Um, they look like they're very very old um, and and used kind of particularly for kind of uh, storing these banners. So um, as this happens, they're taking down these banners and kind of packing them away. Um, and you see them replacing uh, the kind of individual banners of the family with the um, with the kind of colors of, of the forest once again, um, bright greens um, and oranges and yellows um, that you've seen uh, previously in Lavosia. Okay, excellent. Um, question. Yes. Do or does the, like the situation of the people in the town and the sigils does that match up to what we've seen before, like in the circle at the top? I thought that's what we were doing at the beginning, and the answer was no. There is a relational. Um, balance to them. Like I said, that there are ones that are grouped together, um, you know, kind of in kind of like throughout that you see are either adjacent to like they are in the sigil, but like the town itself is not, you know, it's not kind of like a large uh, sigil or like room circle. Okay. I feel like we're getting ready to head out. So I just want to throw in that um, Cletus at some point while this is going on, after breakfast, mm -hmm. uh, we we'll probably uh, just track down Brother Arcadia. Yeah, I assume he's at breakfast too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, he would just like, hey, sorry, I don't mean to bother you. Um, I was just wondering uh, in the barn, there's this um, this sort of sigil thing we saw on it. I don't know, it rang, rang real familiar to me. And I was wondering if I could. Uh, well, not, maybe not have it, but if I could borrow it for a while, I feel like it might help us out on what we're trying to do to restore this place. Um, he lets you know that he's not sure kind of what you're speaking of, but but certainly if um, if you're able to obtain it, that you could, you know, you could uh, take it with you on your travels. Um, it's something that, you know, if you brought it to him, he could let the kind of head of the the kind of different families know that if it you know if it belongs to one of the families um that uh that uh they could you could ask their blessing but um he uh he sees no reason why um it doesn't sound like it's uh it's something of of great importance to um to anyone in particular um that he knows yeah okay he'll he'll go get it and uh, he'll, he'll do all that on top of stuff, I'll go get it, I'll bring it back, be like, here's the thing. Um, so when you go back to the barn, you realize that that whoever was sleeping there has taken it with them. Well, okay. But if you make me a perception check. I will do that. Uh, that's pretty good. 18. Uh, you do recognize it. Uh, being worn around the neck of your erstwhile McHill face friend sitting across the table from you, enjoying a thick slab of bacon. And that's where we'll end this episode of D and DDT with the one and only Tasty Boys. Tasty, Tasty Boys. boys. <laughs> Interdimensional. Thank you for listening. Once again, this has been episode 136 of d and with the Tasty Boys. We tape every other Wednesday here on twitch.tv slash knownworldunited. And if you want to check us out, we're raising funds for Extra Life at extra-life.org. You can search for us uh, by searching Known World United, or for some of our illustrious players, you can check them out and donate to them directly. We're trying to raise $10,000 this year to add to uh, our total supporting kids and their families at Gillette's Children's Specialty Healthcare here in the Minneapolis-St. Paul 
metro area in greater Minnesota. So please check us out uh, and check us out uh, every other week here on twitch.tv or at dndt.com, all spelled out, dndt.com, or follow us at dndt podcast on Twitter. For all of the boys, I am your DM, The Beard, and we'll see you next week. Recording stopped. Hey, thank you, disembodied voice. Thanks to everybody watching on the stream. Uh, Big Logue, thank you so much. Chris G, uh, thank you so much. I think that that's Chris Jant, or Chris Grant. Um, thank you for the sub. Um, I hope to see you at Extra Life. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back for episode 137 uh, in about uh, 10 minutes, starting at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time.